After taking a look at my spare parts shelf, I realized that I have far too damn many parts, and none of them are being used, they're just sitting there. So, last night I wanted to do some gaming, but I realized, because my main machine is a Mac, that I don't have a proper gaming machine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build myself a mid-range, meaning not new, but not junk parts, gaming machine, out of spare stuff that I had laying around. So, first thing that we've got right here is, of course, the case with the motherboard in it. This case, I honestly don't know who makes it, um, but this is what it looks like on the front, if I can get that all in frame. The only issue, as you can see down at the bottom, is there is a small dent. I pulled this thing out of the recycling bin, so, you know, for the condition that it's in otherwise, um, I would say this case is going to be an excellent choice. A couple little dings on the top, but that's fine. The board is an MSI GF615M-P33 board. I've used these systems at work, actually, a couple of times for uh, some basic Windows 7 system builds. They're pretty sturdy boards. They don't support a whole lot of RAM. I think they only support four, um, eight maximum, which is more than enough for my uses. Um, got some SATA cables in there. Also, the power supply is a Cooler Master 460 watt power supply. Pretty reliable. Um, again, this is mid range, so it's nothing new, but it's not junk either. Um, RAM, I'm using a total of four, so two gigs, two gigs of. Um, mismatched RAM. They're both DDR1333 megahertz. Um, those should be enough for what I'm doing. I've got two graphics cards. I think I'll be using the HD5770 instead of the HD4870 just because this one's a little bit newer and I think it's a little bit more powerful as well. But I'll do some research on that and see. So those are the graphics cards. Um, Hard drives, I have a pair of matching WD Blues. These are 500 gig drives. Had them laying around. I just put them in the candy for the sake of the video, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, they're both tested and working, so I'll be using those. And lastly, we have this optical drive, which is a no-name optical drive, SATA. Um, I'm not going to be using it a whole lot, just to install a couple games. So this should work fine. So there we have it folks, this is everything I'll be using. Um, I'm going to throw it all together, install Windows 7, and show you how it rates on Windows 7's rating scale. So it is now a couple of hours later, and I've got this thing set up, and it's ready to go. And it's working quite nicely, I've installed some games and tried them out already, and it runs them pretty damn well considering what I've got in here. And uh, one thing I didn't mention before was the processor, this has an AMD Athlon 2x2, so it's a dual core AMD Athlon at uh, 3.1 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM as I mentioned before, and here are the system um, Windows experience index is what I'm trying to say. Processor rates out at 6.5, memory at 7.1, graphics and gaming graphics at 7.4, which is excellent, and the hard disk of course because it's mechanical at 5.9. So, let's go ahead and try out a game. I think I'll try Spin Tires, which is an excellent off-roading game, just for the heck of it, because that's the first thing I looked at. Alright, enter, and I was playing it before and I got stuck in a ditch here. Now, I'll apologize, as the lighting is not that great in this room, but you should be able to get the idea of it how well it runs, and I'm looking at the camera right now, it doesn't look quite as good as it does on screen, probably because the camera is running at, uh, or recording at 30 frames per second, but I can tell you that I'm definitely getting more than 30 on screen. So that's cool. It runs this game pretty well. If I go into, oh, I don't know, Beam NG, that's another one that requires quite a meaty graphics card in order to render things properly. BeamNG, if you don't know by the way, is an open source, I think, um, racing game that's based mainly on physics. Now I only have the demo because I was too cheap to actually buy it, but it's, uh, it's a demonstration of exactly how good the physics are in this game engine. Start it. 
So overall, my thoughts on this machine, well, I've only been using it for a couple of hours, but I can tell you already, it's going to be a pretty good computer. Now, one thing I'd like to do is hook this thing up to my 27-inch iMac via a uh, mini DisplayPort cable. However, I have to find a graphics card that supports mini DisplayPort or do some kind of connection or uh, adapter for that. So if we come around here... As I said before, it's a physics-based based game. I can't get over this bump. That's, that's insane. Alright, there we go. I was hoping to uh, drive at something and then slow the, or slow the recording down, which is one of the features of this game. So I slowed it down four times. You can see it's going over the terrain pretty well. Very, very good frame rate. So, I guess that's about enough for this gaming aspect here. Um, so again, my thoughts. It's going to be a good machine. I was happy that I was able to build this for completely free. I didn't put any money into this, other than maybe traveling to get the parts, but that all worked itself out somewhere, I'm sure. And uh, there you have it, folks. So, you can definitely build a gaming machine out of spare parts, so long as you have good spare parts. I definitely have quite a few, and have it work for uh, some pretty good games. Once again, there you have it. Gaming machine, for free, out of spare parts. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know, and thank you for watching.